Welcome to JDM Legends, presented by Turn 14 Distribution. As you can see, we are back at Vibrant Performance, and we are taking this car home with us today. But first, let's find out if Greg will electrocute himself welding with water. So one of the last challenges we have is welding on this uh, HD ferrule to the throttle body, and you raised the very, I think, relevant point that there are rubber uh, seals yeah. on the side of the, the butterfly valve and you don't want to melt those while welding this on? Yeah, and taking the, the throttle shaft, throttle plate shaft out is not an option because we won't ever get it back uh, the same way. So we jerry-rig something. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Water's a great thermal uh, barrier and it'll draw a ton of heat out of the part. So I've got a little metal uh, base in here that I'm still grounded to the table. Yep. And the metal will transmit the uh, we like the current yep. through the bottom of the part, which is still touching the uh, the basin. Yep. And then hopefully the water won't allow that heat to permeate through the part and get to where the washers are right. or the gaskets. So if I touch this while you're welding, am I going to get electrocuted? Or? Hopefully. Sweet. Let's find out. <laughs> All right, first pass is complete here, and to me it looks great, but you're not exactly thrilled with the results. Do you want to walk me through what you're unhappy with? Yeah, so castings are always a challenge, um, and especially a challenge for myself, not having tremendous amount of time behind uh, welding castings, and this is a 20-year-old uh, casting that's seen in engine bay and dirt and grime. Uh, although I've milled the, the top flat and ground all the way around, there's still a lot of porosity and contamination in that um, casting. For those of you who are gonna learn from my mistakes, I would recommend, uh, one, making sure that the casting is absolutely clean. Um, you can't ever be too clean with, with a, especially aluminum welding. But secondly, uh, you can run a, a dry pass before even introducing the ferrule to the throttle body okay. uh, and run a bead uh, to try and pull up some of that porosity and then grind it flat again. Oh, interesting. And then, and then introduce your ferrule. Um, but I'm sure the comments will let us know what, what I could have done <laughs> they better. They always will. They, they always will, Greg. And Welcome I'm looking to forward to that because, you know, I, I have an opportunity to learn here. Now that the throttle body's in place, it's time for Greg to show us his fancy charge pipe, which is a one-piecer. And sometimes guys split this in the middle and make it a little easier to fit in there with a coupler, but I like the one-piece design. Less possibilities of a leak somewhere, right? Yeah. And it fits in there pretty well? It does its job. Sneak it in there, show us how it works. Okay, I got that. Rotate that. Man, that was actually super easy. So Greg is just putting the, that's your alignment tool, that is not the HD clamp. This is the HD clamp here. Yeah. And the beauty of these is that they give you a really positive connection that allows some articulation in that joint. Right? Absolutely. And this is your alignment tool, which is what's on there now. So you're just test fitting it with the alignment tool. Can you yeah. explain to us what this does exactly? Yeah, so this is a fabrication tool. And what this will do is the machined recesses here uh, interact with the weld ferrule in a way that it maintains a perfect concentric um, ferrule during fabrication so that they're not angled or misaligned so that when you go to actually put your HD clamp on, you're not wrestling with it. And ultimately, it's not a fault of the clamp, it's unfortunately during the fabrication that not all uh, the clearances were taking into uh, consideration. Sure. So we have an HD alignment tool at both ends here. So that means that this, those ferrules are captured right in the middle of their motion between the two. So now when we go to put an on HD alignment tool on, we're not gonna be squirming with that uh, union sleeve and fighting to get it on. It should just go on uh, very easily. It makes sense. In uh, layman's terms, these square your ferrules up nice and good, even gap, it makes it easy to put this thing on there. Job done.
All right, Greg, fit that up. Very easily. Easier than Pete and I seem to be able to do it. It's almost like you've practiced with these before, but. Because I the use the, it's the alignment tool, man. Yeah, it is it's the all, It's all in the fit up. All of the problems we see with the HD alignment tool all stem back to poor fit up. Interesting. And look at the amount of movement this allows. Like that noise you're hearing is just the ferrule at the bottom hitting. Bottoming out. It's not hitting anything on the chassis, but it allows so much movement here, which is great because as the engine rocks, it can articulate without yeah, especially stressing with, any components. Especially with soft motor mounts and that sort of thing. Which we have in this car. Yeah. 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 So that motor will rock quite a bit under load. And it's obviously a very strong uh, clamp as well. It, you have yet to see the diesel guys blow these up, making 200 pounds of boost. I've seen billet blocks split and do like a flip like that in the alignment tool or sorry, the, the clamp HD is... clamp and, and tubing is what keeps the motor from leaving the, uh, the building. Wild, wild. Yeah. And you can see we also fit up our tile blow off valve here, which clears the battery nicely. I think it's in a nice subtle location. It's kind of, you know, tucked in the same plane as the top of the engine. So yeah, we got rid of that traction control system. We forgot to mention oh, yeah. the throttle plate and that fit up perfectly there. Yeah, it gave us the real estate to use by deleting that traction control. That was a great so, idea. Yeah, that worked out well and it gave you a clean surface to weld the ferrule on. Man, well, with the intake on there, this thing is done. And I gotta say, you did an awesome job. Thanks so much, Greg. It really turned out beautiful. You've got a, the perfect amount of clearance around everything. And using these smaller pipes did make it easier, didn't it? We went down to a two and a quarter inch diameter tubing on the hot side and two and a half on the yep. cold side. Versus, and of course, the smaller intercooler as well. Yep. Versus the free intercooler, which was set up for a three inch and three and a half inch. Exactly. And you've actually done some math on that to sort of back up the theory of this giving us a more responsive setup. Absolutely. And w the calculations showed like the freed setup, intercooler and piping together was 23 liters in yep. volume. And this setup is 13 liters of volume. So yeah. a 10 liter difference in volume. That's, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, so percentage wise, the intercooler and tubing for the freed it would be 70% larger mm -hmm than the setup you see here. So that should equate to some dramatic response difference. Yeah, I am more stoked than ever to see how responsive this setup's gonna be now that you've done that math for us. And, and thank, thank uh, your Kyle. student, Kyle, for doing the math on that too. And man, all in all, I think it looks amazing. However, the engine looks kind of dirty and it doesn't match all these shiny parts. And you did do this nice like uh, brushed look on it, which gives it, I think, a really nice finish. And you literally did that with like a 3M yep. scotch Bright type pad. Yeah. Right? So just, I feel it's a much more, for those of uh, us that aren't going to go get the tubing coated, yes. um, living with polished tubing can be, uh, it, it'll scratch very easily mm. and it just won't look as fresh as w than with a, a polish finish and you can just keep a 3M pad with you and if you do get a scuff on it, just give scuff it another, it uh, just in the direction of the, uh, uh, the grain. The grain, like, yeah. yeah. We are going to Cerakote all this stuff. Yeah. So it'll... Go, you know, visually it'll look a little bit more OE, I guess. Pete's OEM plus <laughs> love is coming back. So uh, I think that's it, guys. I think it's time to load this thing on the trailer and head back to the shop. And just like that, we're back to where we started with no 2JZ in the engine bay. And man, that thing comes out so easy. We're gonna do some cleanup in here in the next episode, but uh, wanted to let you know that we are sending out all those sexy charge pipes and the intercooler and the manifold to be Cerakoted. 
We'll tell you more about what coating is when those parts come back, but uh, basically it's a way of uh, heat protecting them or pre preventing them from radiating too much heat. So that is what you're gonna be seeing, seeing in the near future, including us making that engine look new again and then getting all the beautiful stuff bolted on there and back in the hole. Before we end this one, we have had a lot of people asking about where to get these Artec Performance manifolds. And if you're in the USA, you can get them at Drift HQ, which coincidentally is now owned by world famous YouTuber, Adam LZ. So you will not only be supporting uh, this really innovative uh, manifold company out of Australia, you'll be supporting one of our favorite YouTubers and maybe one of your favorite YouTubers too. And of course you're getting this really compact uh, cast design, which is very durable and just makes life so much simpler with all the plumbing we showed you. And this uh, little extension that we put on here, that is only necessary if you're running a big turbo and a tile wastegate like we are. But Bennett Artec is now aware of this issue and he can accommodate you no matter what combo of turbo and gate you're running. And for your twin scroll guys, look at this. This is our Tech Performance twin scroll 2JZ manifold. It is obviously a T4 flange and you can see he puts the gates in a really good location underneath the manifold. So if you guys really, really want to go twin scroll, he can do that for you. But he did say you really only need this if you're making over 750 wheel horsepower. Below that, which is certainly where we're going to be, the single scroll is more than capable of getting you there and it just simplifies all the plumbing and all that you know, stuff that we've explained to you already. So that is officially a wrap on this one, guys. So excited to have the car back at the shop and ready for its big cleanup and then its reassembly. And then it's burnouts, you know, it's mile long burnouts. Oh, wait a minute, no, we're building a response machine, everyone, not a burnout machine. Go to the track and show you what response is all about. And as you can see, this clutch is trashed. I think the previous owner did admit to like trying to do a heinous burnout or something and he just like melted the clutch. Yeah, like that area, look at that side that right there. That inner ring there is just, just completely right.